Let's bring in a doctor racing to work towards a vaccine for the virus. Joining us right now on the Squawk Newsline is Dr. Robin Shattuck, the head of um, mucosal infection and immunity at the Department of Medicine at Imperial College London. Dr. Shattuck, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. It sounds like you are already working on animal trials for a potential vaccine. Can you tell us where things stand? Yeah, so we have um, been very fortunate, as other groups have around the world, that the Chinese scientists were, made the genetic sequence of the virus available in a, in a record quick time. And that's allowed us to use that information to start developing a, a candidate vaccine, which we've moved into animal testing this week. And we hope to move to human testing with, within a period of months. Where, what, what, what does that mean in terms of if everything went as well as possible, how soon a, a potential vaccine would be available for, uh, for around the world? Well, I think there's a couple of things to put it in context. First of all, we and the other teams around the world that are working on vaccine candidates have, you know, moved much faster than has been done before. We've, we've kind of done this first stage in a matter of weeks than months to years. But it still requires a lot of testing to see if these vaccines are safe, um, then to see if they work in field trials. And so the, the earliest that anyone will get to making a vaccine globally available would be the beginning of next year, if not later. Um, what is exciting is by having multiple teams working against the same target, we hope that, uh, that you know, more than one candidate will come through and that will mean that there's plenty in terms of scale up and different supply chains to act as efficiently as possible. Doctor, what, what's the current uh, technology in, this is an RNA uh, stranded virus, right? Single stranded. So do, do you try to make a vaccine against the RNA or, or do you actually express uh, the RNA and, to see what it makes and find something that's conserved to, to make a vaccine yeah, so against? Um, what's really useful is um, a lot of the science is driven by our understanding of uh, previous coronaviruses, SARS and MERS, and that's allowed teams to identify the small portion of the genetic code that uh, has the instructions for making just the protein that's expressed on the surface of I the see. virus. Okay, and so that's this is a target. And that, that seems to be conserved and doesn't at the moment seem to be changing. I know um, it would take additional money. How much money would you need to continue with funding if you are to take this all the way through? So uh, it's hard to predict how much money is required to take it all the way because that will really depend on where the pandemic is, um, you know, uh, over the coming months um, and how many doses may be required. If the current measures contain it within China, um, that will be a very different scenario to a virus that might become a pandemic. There are so many questions that have been raised just about the incubation period, about how it's spread. Do you have a better idea of how that works since you've had access to it? Um, so, no, we, we don't have a better idea than other experts who are working on this. And, in fact, you know, the, uh, the epidemiologists are really the people who understand the numbers here. Um, I think it's still uh, something that needs to be watched carefully. We still need more information. Luckily, the WHO have a team now on the ground in China that's able to verify some of the data that's coming out. Um, it's, uh, it looks dramatic, but that's because the fatality rate is calculated at the moment on the number of uh, cases right. and doesn't take into account those individuals that have mild symptoms or right. no symptoms. So it's probably an overestimation um, rather than a, a real figure. In your experience, if it were to be a pandemic, would there be a second wave if it's slowing down and then the vaccine might be ready by the time that it would actually be a global problem? Is that why you're rushing to do it? Because it's not going to be ready at least until next year, right? Yeah. So, again, we don't know how things will work out. The best case scenario would be that this actually starts to go away and by the summer it disappears. Yeah. Um, it may be that there will be a, a distinct slowdown over the summer. Um, uh, what we are trying to put in place as a kind of global vaccine community is to have vaccine available if it comes back. Uh, you know, with a vengeance next year on a more global basis. We hope that that won't be 
be the case, right. but it's important to have that insurance policy in place.